1966. Oh my goodness! Thank you for the follow, Judge Judy Slayer. I appreciate that. <laughs> that almost got me, because there's no thunderstorms happening outside. <laughs> but this, this June 66 outbreak is a sequence because there were 11 whole days of tornadoes and with the whole storm system event happening for two weeks from Texas to New York. Hey there, Frida. Very short outbreak overview. There were three violent tornadoes. Two of them were in Kansas and one of them in Minnesota. And these violent tornadoes included two F4s and one F5. The F5 is seen here in this picture, the Topeka tornado, with a with all of its stats listed here. This singular F5 accounted for more than 80% of both the deaths and injuries combined from the whole outbreak. So 80% of the deaths, more than that actually, and more than 80% of the injuries. This outbreak created a total of 57 tornadoes, and there are 50 much, much lower rated tornadoes. Let's start with the notables, of course. The McLouth Kansas F4, unfortunately there are no pictures of this tornado. I would love to have had some pictures with this one, obviously. And spoilers, there's no pictures for the second one either. I would have loved to have pictures for that one too, trust me. But what we do know about this tornado is that it tracked 32 kilometers. And along that way, it killed one and injured two. A very low amount of people, considering the strength of this tornado. And one of its most notable pieces of damage is that it completely lifted a home off of its foundation. I think it was around a hundred feet or so, which is impressive. It's very, very impressive. We do not know the total cost uh, in terms of U.S. dollars in damage that this storm, that this tornado inflicted, though. And that's the same for this tornado as well, the Jenkins, Minnesota F4. What we do know, of course, though, is that it had a track of. 117 kilometers just over that 117.2 seen there and surprisingly this is not from a family of tornadoes this path was created by this singular f4 which only maxed out at 800 meters in width however i mean this this does go to show that you do not need to have a two mile wide monster for it to be a high rated tornado. And this was indeed a very high end F4, so towards the F5 scale. Thankfully, though, it only injured three people, but snapped thousands of trees. But unfortunately, that's all we know of this tornado. What we the tornado we do know a lot more about is the Topeka, Kansas F5. We have many pictures of this tornado. And there is two parts to this tornado because there is something very special about uh, what happened. So this tornado, as seen, obviously with these pictures, was very, very widely photographed and tracked a relatively small 35 kilometers. This tornado did, ca did cause 16 deaths and 450 injuries. This did hit the capital of Kansas after all, Topeka. And its path seen here both placed out on a graph and also seen from the air. Uh, as you can see, especially on the graph, this tornado directly hit Washburn University. Almost 
directly hit, though somehow didn't receive major damage, the Kansas State's Capitol, or the State House, and also the Municipal Airports, which is surprisingly actually not seen here on the graph, but from, as you can see, the Weather Bureau is also listed here at the end of its track, and it almost got directly hit. Oops, I clicked. And uh, Burnett's Mound is noted here as well, and that is for a very, very good reason that I will talk about in just a little bit. But again, this was an F5 that hit a big city. This is not the first time, and it will not be the last time, that a high-end tornado will hit a large city. But again, like I've been saying, this has been widely photographed. As you can see in the bottom left, picture taken. Let's see. I said that does say only 45 seconds after that, after that picture, it would go on to hit Topeka. This is relatively early in its lifetime. I would say on the track around here-ish, maybe, where I'm kind of creating a fake line with the laser pointer. And this photograph to the right of it is quite notable because you see some vorticity funnels or vorticity noodles coming out of the side of this thing as, com as not seen in the left-hand side photo. Ooh, a bot. I must ban the bot, it is essential. Ban the bot. Bot has been banned. Well done, boys. We've got him. We've got him! <laughs> okay, sorry about that. The second... Here's the second part of the Topeka F5. Again, Burnett's Mound. And listed, and sorry, circled here for a clarification to see where it is. This was a myth breaker, the Topeka F5, for the town. And that's why Burnett's Mound has been listed, listed here on the graph. And shown there on the graph. And why I'm talking about it. It was believed that Burnett's Mound would deflect or dissipate any tornado that hit this mound and this doesn't make sense at all i mean this mound is only like 250 feet tall at its peak and it's a gradual slope which is why it's a mound and it, it that is much much less of a cover story than waco what well, waco is story about being in a geological depression makes a lot more sense than a tornado hitting a mound and it just dissipating right then and there. <laughs> um, this, on from that, this tornado, as worded here, did receive excellent on-air coverage, and Bill Curtis, at the time, at a, uh, who was on-air, said calmly but sternly for god's sake take cover and it is he is credited for saving possibly hundreds of lives because of that on top of this excellent on-air coverage there is excellent nws and spotter work done and even today this can serve as a model for safety there could have been much more deaths if this tornado had struck when schools were in session and if businesses were still full of people. Thankfully, this did not. However, even with all this work done, it still it could have been worse. And very thankfully, it was not. In a very quick summary here, this outbreak sequence had a very short order of intense, meaning F3 and above, twisters, especially when you consider the length of the sequence, 
Like I said, this was a source system that took two whole weeks, 14 days, to track through the U.S. You'd think that a lot more in intense twisters would have occurred, but thankfully that did not happen. And of course, still talking about Topeka. In fact, if you want to look up more info, there's a link right there. The fact is that Topeka had numerous, numerous safety features in place. They were unusually vigilant for severe weather, especially considering the time period around the night. This is 1966. And on top of that, they had the safety features despite this myth that, that was still held to be true. Despite the fact that sirens were still not being used at all. We're still four years away from sirens starting to be used. And their radar, despite being top of the line from the U.S. Air Force, in fact, did not have an easy time tracking supercells or rain in general. I mean, this is a USAF radar. This is not in the 60s. This isn't especially meant for low scanning, I would believe. But, and like I said earlier, Topeka still remains a very, very excellent example of safety. And yes, there were almost 500 injuries and there were almost 20 deaths, but that could have been so much worse if this was much more poorly handled. And it's very thankful that it didn't go worse. But that is it that I that is all that I have for today. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. Um I I actually do like making these shorter videos cuz not everyone has the time to watch an hour long video, of course. I mean, also, this outbreak didn't exactly have too much to cover, but I will see you guys in the next one.